Welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today I'm incredibly excited because I get to make my very first video on the Johnny Lightning car series. Now this particular car, the Johnny Lightning Special, A.J. Foyt car, was introduced in 1971. Now, in 1970 and 71, the winner of the Indianapolis 500, Al Unser Sr., he was actually sponsored by Johnny Lightning and he won the Indy 500 both years in a row. That was an amazing feat to that to this time and it still is an amazing feat after winning four total. Well, we're going to restore this Johnny Lightning to its original glory and I'm really excited about that. I'd like to introduce you to my friend Mac Reagan. Mac Reagan wrote a book on the Johnny Lightning collectibles. He also wrote several other books on the Diecast collectible series, such as Matchbox, Hot Wheels, and a bunch of other cars. Mac is a noted and uh, noted author, and his his books are fantastic. Now, some of these books are a little bit older now, but if you can find them, they're definitely worth having in your collection because they're full of a incredible amount of knowledge in the collection series. And I would like to dedicate this video to my friend Mac Reagan. Here we've got the car. We've already drilled out the post. Now these cars are very simplistic, especially when they first came out. Now when Johnny Lightning first appeared in 1970 on a line, I believe it was 69, they were competition for the Hot Wheels. Now as quickly as they showed up, they disappeared. And 23 years later, Playing Mantis has acquired the Johnny Lightning name brand and they make cars to this day. Well, the body's in really good shape. The plastic exhaust pipes on the back with the turbochargers need some re-chroming. The base is in good shape, but the tires need to be touched up. Now, finding replacement parts for these Johnny Lightning cars are virtually impossible. Fortunately, the plastic windshield is in good shape. If you plan on restoring one of these cars, you're more than likely going to need a donor car of some kind because it's almost impossible to find parts. Here we've got the car. We're going to put it in the citrus strip, but the very first thing we're going to do is remove this little plastic decal on the top here. Um, kind of a cheapy decal, but uh, we're going to do the best we can to get a reproduction made. So let's go ahead and put that in a stripper and get all the old paint off there. Like I said, I'm really excited about this build. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's move on. We've got the body out of the paint stripper, so we're going to use some Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream to polish this up. The body itself really wasn't in that bad a shape. It was just missing paint and the decals were all peeled up and it's, it was just tired and it definitely needs a refresh. So I got the cream and I've got my polisher here and we're going to go ahead and shine it up to an almost mirror-like shine. Like I said, these cars were very simple and um, they, they gave Hot Wheels a good run, but they definitely uh, needed some different designs. Now my friend Mac Reagan, he came on later on the scene and he actually worked for the uh, Johnny Lightning series. He also worked for the uh, Greenlight series, etc and help design some of these cars. So this man has a plethora of knowledge that can be gained by you by looking for his publications and keeping them in your library. I happen to have the Johnny Lightning Guide and I absolutely loved it. I still love it. I reached out to Mac and uh, he uh, answers me promptly on questions and whatever and I just keep him alerted to some of the things I'm uh, doing. I let him know I was doing this video on the restoration, but I didn't let him know that I was going to be throwing him under the bus here when it comes to uh, announcing him to uh, everybody out there in the diecast world. Now Mac also was just inducted into the Hall of Honor for the uh, toys and the diecast, etc., for his uh, work with publications, etc. So congratulations to him and hats off to him. We got this car all polished up. It, it turned out really nice. 
So what we're going to need to do is get this in the, uh, spray it down with degreaser, the ZEP degreaser, and we'll get that ready for some nice purple paint. Now there's three versions of this car, the Al Unser version, the AJ Foyt version, and the Parnelli Jones version. And uh, they're all nice cars to have if you can find them in good shape. Here we're putting on the tack coats. We're putting on some very light coats of this beautiful purple. And then we're going to put some heavier coats on once this sets for a few minutes. This is going to turn out sweet. I can feel it already. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. Now once this car has had an opportunity to dry and harden up, I had my friend Kenny Terry make me up some decals for the front end to reproduce that number two with the lightning bolts coming off of it. And he did a fantastic job on there. We're going to rub down the car, and or not rub it down, but we're going to take a paintbrush and we're going to put down some of the micro set. Because of the uh, bubble near the, uh, the knees where the driver would sit, it kind of goes up in the air. Now this uh, micro set will help that decal conform to the shape of the car so it will lay nice and flat around those co complex curves. You put your decal in the water for approximately 10 to 15 seconds, slightly remove it off the decal paper, and then put it into position. Now you'll be messing around with this for quite a while, so once you finally get it in the position you want to, go ahead and leave it. And get in there with your paintbrush and rub it down with the micro set just a little bit more. But be careful because if you put down too much, it'll actually start to melt the decal. Get your Q-tip or your, your cotton swab and uh, rub it out and get the uh, excess water or fluid out from underneath the decal and uh, it will lay nice and flat. Let's go ahead and move on. Here we've got the base. It cleaned up really nice. We're going to take this fine tip Molotow chrome pen and we're going to touch up the rims on this uh, base. Now like I said, parts for these cars are very very hard to come by. Now the wheels are in good shape, but there's a little bit of the chrome missing off the rims. So we're going to take this fine tip chrome pen and we're going to go ahead and touch up the wheels. Now it's not going to look perfect, but we'll do the best we can with what we got. Same thing, but we're going to take a larger Molotow chrome pen and we're going to recoat the exhaust. There's a lot of that chrome worn off and we're going to use this pen to cover up as much as we can with the wide tip pen. Now later on we'll go back in with the fine tip chrome pen and reach the places that you can't reach with this wide tip pen. This is probably one of the best things I have found are these Molotow chrome pens. I mean literally when you put them on they look like chrome. Now you can take the tip and put it down on a little piece of paper or a little piece of plastic and then you can use a paintbrush to get into where you're going to uh, cover anything you want to. Just give it plenty of time to dry and try not to handle it with your fingers. Now one thing I have found out that once you put down this uh, silver tip pen, you can clear coat it, but it tends to react to it a little bit and takes away some of the luster. So you're going to have to decide whether you want to protect it with the clear or you want to have that luster. Experiment with it and you'll see what I mean. That's starting to look real good. We've got just about everything, but again, like I said, we're going to have to go back in with the fine tip and get the little places that we missed. Here's all the pieces. We got the base. That looks great. The wheels look good. Fantastic there. Rolls nice and clean. We got the exhaust pipes here. There still may be a little piece here and there that we got to touch up, but that's all right. Windshield's in great shape. And here's the body. Man, did that turn out nice. I'm very happy with this. Fantastic. And here's what we started with. This really nice looking 
Johnny Lightning AJ Foyt special um, these cars were super fast man I'll tell you I mean sometimes these cars would, would literally whip the hell out of some Hot Wheels so hence the name Johnny Lightning and they were lightning fast too they were a little bit weird looking like you know exhaust pipes like there and the turbos on the end of the exhaust and everything but uh, they are what they are they're die cast they're collectible and this one needed restoration but um, I was really happy to have the opportunity to do this car. I've got a few other Johnny Lightnings that I'm going to be working on here, and hopefully I'll find the parts that I need to do these restorations. Now let's go ahead and show you how it turned out completely. I'm really excited. And this is how it turned out. Man, what a beautiful car. I am so happy to have done this and had this in my collection. The beautiful purple paint restored completely the uh, remake decals from kennyterry.com check out his website for custom decals or ones that he already has in stock he does a fantastic job and he'll take care of you mention diecast graveyard actually in the comment block where you put down like a coupon code put the word graveyard and you will get a 10 percent discount on any order that you make with Kenny Terry and his decals. The guy does fantastic works, folk, uh, work, folks. Don't, uh, don't pass him by. He can definitely make your project go from great to greater. All right, what a fantastic time this was. Now, I want to tell you about my Patreon page. I've got a bunch of great folks that help me with donations every month. Now, these guys help me with supplies and stuff that I need to make these videos for you folks. And if you want to become a member of the Diecast Graveyard team, I'm going to leave a link in the comments block so you can go ahead and check out the uh, Diecast Graveyard team. Now what you get is you'll have an opportunity to see videos one, two, three days, even weeks in advance before they're released to the public. I'll also send you pictures of work in progress that might not make it to videos for uh, customs that I'm doing for customers and like that. Later on, I'll be having some t-shirts come out and all kinds of really good stuff. Plus, if you're doing this as a hobby, you'll have a chance to ask me questions that I'll get back to you as soon as I can and maybe even do a one-on-one -on -one conference with me to help you with your die cast building and your customizations. What a fantastic opportunity. Thank all these guys so much for the generosity and I couldn't do it without you folks. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Diecast Graveyard today. There's going to be a lot more videos coming out, and I'm going to keep on pumping them out as long as we're home with this COVID-19 virus. So please consider the Patreon team. I sure could use your help. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Have a great day.